because I love to paint, I've been asked to say a few words about some of the pictures in this exhibition. And um, I did art, as most people do at school in Kent, and I did A-level art and decided that this was something that I would like to pursue later on. Um, and so when I returned to Belfast, where my family had moved from Dublin, um, I entered the art college, rather older than some, and, um, and started to paint. And this is the first of the pictures um, from the art college that I was able to ferret out after all this time. And this is where my brother and my sister and I used to um, pedal on our bicycles along the towpath of the Lagan Valley. And this is one of the earliest pictures I painted when I went to art college. What sort of medium is it? And this is poster colour. Can you still get poster colour? I don't think you can still get poster colour. It may be the composition stuff that they use for children, small children in schools. But I think that it's, it's um, you don't really see it advertised much. And what about the colour palette that you chose at that time? I don't think I was aware of the colour palette at all. It, it was so, such figurative painting um, that one just painted what one saw. And that lasted quite a long time. In fact, the whole time I was at the College of Art. Um, and I did uh, lots of other courses in other mediums, um, other specialities like jewellery design and bookbinding and as you do in a in a regular course at art college. How, how long were you at the college? Three years. And were they happy years? They were absolutely wonderful, <laughs> yes. They were wonderful years, yes. Good. Um, this, this is another little picture of Belfast. As you can see, it's extremely figurative but colourful. And it's, I think it's off the Falls Road originally, but of course none of this would be now as it was then. And um, and it's obviously um, stylized, but but not in the uh, in the rather free way that I like to paint now. But it is um, representative of the time of, and we were probably told to do a street scene as one of um, as one of the studies. And it shows that you had to learn perspective and all those sorts of things. Can you talk a bit about it? Yes, we would have had to learn about perspective um, and about the skyline and um, not much about the harmony of painting because um, just we were asked to just paint a, a street scene and this is what I painted. Um, this, is, this is a watercolour, a very, very quick sketch of um, from the side of the river where my husband had a, um, um, a flat for a while, while he worked in London, and um, and I must have gone down in on, along the water edge and and just think it's a very long time ago, and so um, it's it's as you can see it's very sketchy. This is um, obviously featured on the invitation to the exhibition, and um, and I think it's it started off to be. Um, as I usually do, it must have a structure. I always like to paint from real life. I like to see something in front of me. I don't just um, mess about with paint and hope something comes out of it. I really, really like to sketch. I like to paint out in the open air and I like to um, uh, uh, create something and, and as much about the feeling of the place and the colour that of the and the time of day, which it might be early evening, and um, and it is um, verging on the way I. Um, it's this is a beginning of a way I like to paint. The reflection is so beautiful. Can you just talk about the reflection? Well, I think if you were, if you paint water and obviously the, the um, Waterloo Bridge. Um, Tower Bridge has got a lot of, of the Thames flowing underneath it and there is always a reflection. It doesn't matter even on a dull day. The reflection of the light from the sky in the water is, is, is something that 
or most all painters love to capture if they can. Um, this, um, we did a lot of traveling, which was wonderful and, um, and inspirational for a painter to travel is, is really spectacular. And one of the visits we made was to the Galapagos. And I should think everybody who has ever watched the television um, wildlife programs knows how spectacular a place the Galapagos is. And this is one of the largest pictures I ever painted. I had to stand on, um, on a large piece of wood balanced on uh, a whole lot of boxes uh, so that I could paint the sky. Now, um, um, people who've been to the Galapagos know that you are very, very restricted in the parts of the beautiful islands that you are allowed to land on um, and designated um, areas where you stay. And we did see one small Galapagos hawk. Um, but obviously I had to then interpret the, as I wanted the hawk, where it was down below and the special thick paint and the structure of the claws and the, and the head and the beak and the wings were the most important part. And then I need to, needed to put something behind. And I obviously put in, I put in um, Galapagos Mountains, but I, we, would not, we were not allowed to be anywhere within the mountain ranges of the Galapagos. But I have put them in from, from other well, photographs taken by other people. Can you tell me more about how unusual it is for the hawk to be so low down in the painting? Is that where you actually saw the hawk? Um, no, I think I just chose to put the hawk in um, down low so that so well it would be impacted, that it would be at your eye level because it's such a large picture. It needs to be hung quite high because you can then see the um, the, the density and the love of the paint that is uh, that makes up the hawk itself. Um, do you think you could paint a painting that big again? Not in, not at my age. <laughs> so I, I couldn't paint a picture as big as this. I have painted lots of large pictures, and but but this this is probably the largest I've ever painted. So really, it's a one-off. It's a one-off. The Ichina Valley, uh, River Valley, is, 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 is quite beautiful. Um, we meet our son who lives in Bath from uh, every six weeks. This was before coronavirus, obviously. And um, we arrived one day and I got out my sketchbook and I sketched it because the light was just absolutely perfect. And, but as you can see, it has an interpretation of the way I like now to paint. Um, which is obviously based on what is before me, but I, I like to use it in a very free way and accentuate the colours. Can you talk more about the colour palette? Um, I've obviously had a, um, a number of, of, of teachers, but Robin Child has been the most inspirational um, and the most informed uh, um, and taught to his pupils this fantastic way of organizing your palette. And so very rarely is the color just straight out of, out of the tube. It is pretty well always mixed and hopefully in enough of harmony um, to give um, a feeling of structure and um, and togetherness, but then little touches of magic, like the 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 uh, the orange in the bottom of this picture, is um, just part of the way one loves to express oneself. Um, I I told you before that um, we have been very fortunate and been to some absolutely wonderful parts of the world, quite amazing. Um, Afghanistan, Uzbekistan. Um, China, India twice, and but we were very, very fortunate. And um, in in 2010, to go to the Antarctic, which was one of the most incredible experiences of our lives, and this is part. Uh, this is an illustration of a rusted wreck, where the 
when the whales were being um, killed in, in their thousands to provide um, the developing world with oil blubber for all sorts of needed products. And, but obviously when they stopped whaling and killing whales, um, they did the, the wrecks were left behind. And so were a huge number of buildings and equipment and, um, and they were all there on, on this, on the beach. And what time of day did you paint it? Well, there was an almost constant blizzard when we were relating the season going to the Antarctic um, and had two incredible storms, one going and one coming, and of which I lo absolutely loved because it was all so dramatic. Um, um, but uh, the time of year was February. February in 2010. We went out in the Zodiacs and uh, um, it got extremely wet. Um, it, it didn't really matter what time of the day, it was usually roughish. Um, but we were able to land on the, land on the um, ice and, um, and go and explore within a limited region because we were a, a smallish number. You only ever uh, are allowed a hundred people on the, um, on the ice at any one time. And as we were in a, uh, a, a ship that only carried 130 passengers, um, we were very, very fortunate and managed to land and walk all around these, um, these wrecks and in amongst the penguins. Did you take a photograph of it and work <laughs> from that or did you yes. take a sketch? Well, I did sketch while I was there, but I actually, yes, I did take photographs a lot while I was there. Can you, can you talk about this, the lilies in the vase and all the flower paintings that you like to do and why? Um, I look, we live in a wonderful part of Sussex, there's no question. After having um, lived and worked in London for 29 years, um, moving to Sussex was a, a, a complete revelation for a painter. And um, the, the garden... Um, is obviously where one starts because when you can set up one's easel and I love to paint out of doors. I paint out of doors as much as I possibly can. I just take my easel out um, where I am and, and mix my palette and then I, um, I, uh, I just feel the freedom of being out of doors it gives, lends me um, an extra dimension. And I have painted a huge number of flowers over the years, and um, and some are in the in Belfast in the government house, quite quite big um, oil paintings of flowers that I've painted here in the garden, and um, and ones that I have um, collected, and but I did a, a set of seasonal ones, particularly with flowers in mind. And, um, but mostly from, from the garden flowers. And this one? These are lilies. These are day lilies that we grew. And the color palette with the reds. You don't often paint with lots of red. Yes, our oh, day lilies are mostly red. <laughs> <laughs> Is it nice for you to choose to paint in red? Do you have a favorite color? Um, it, um, people love red paintings. Um, Robin Child, who I've mentioned already, um, has uh, talks to us about painters, obviously. I mean, it is so exciting to see what um, the Impressionists and the Fauvists and, um, and, and a whole range of, of other wonderful painters leading right up to the present day. And so we were all obviously challenged by, by the idea of painting uh, blue trees and or red trees or vice versa and this was one of the small examples that well, I liked myself. And who was it by in the style of? It's the Fauvists. Fauvists. The Fauvists, yes. Okay. They were a very limited group of them and they, and, um, they, they didn't last very long 
but they were very exciting and very, very colourful. So look them up for yourselves. <laughs>